All right, today we're going to be looking at leak code 3434, maximum frequency after subarray operation. Uh, kind of a fun one. Um, so let's just dive into it. So you are given an array nums of length n. You're also given an integer k. We're going to perform the following operation on nums once. So we'll select a subarray nums i through j, and then we're going to select an instant an integer x and add x to all the elements in that subarray. Uh, well, the goal here is we want to find the maximum frequency of the value k after the operation. So let's take a look at the examples here. Uh, first example, it's an array, it is 1 through 6, we're given a target value k of 1, and we see the output here is 2. So if we look at how they chose to solve it, they are going to add negative 5 to nums 2 through 5. Um, and if we look, the output here is this is this one is the zeroth index, so this is left untouched. This is already a k value, and uh, then we add negative five to all of them, and we can see our additional k value shows up here at the last index. That becomes an additional one, and that's where we're getting the output to from here. Um, so. I think the first thing we should be thinking of here is if I give you a set of numbers and I tell you I want to get to uh, some arbitrary value, let's just say it's k, uh, and you want to, you need to apply a constant x to get there, the first way you should be thinking of optimizing is duplicates, right? Again, if we have values and we want to apply a constant x to them and we want a target value, that to get to that target value and applying that constant x, it has to. It means that we have to look for duplicates. Um, so now that we have that intuition that we're looking for duplicates, what's the best way for us to find them? Now you might be thinking, well, okay, great. I'm just going to find the most common element in the array, and then I will include it in my subarray. So I'll just find the longest string and that'll that'll be my subarray, right? And you can kind of look at that a little bit here in the example two of that approach and for this it works, right? Clearly uh, element two or the number two is the most common element here. There is three of them um, and they section it out here as I have one through nine and then they're just going to add eight, right? And then so all of these two will turn into tens. That will give us output four. Now for this problem, it works, right? But very easily the problem could instead look, so if I modify um, this array to look something like this, so again, we'll start with our 10 and then we'll have a two. Now imagine in here that we just have uh, a bunch of tens, right? And then we'll say, we'll look here and we have the fives and then we'll get a four and then we'll have three and finally our two twos right so two is still our most common element outside of ten um i guess this wasn't a good example because this would be let's see we'll do nine here okay that'll make sense um so two is still our most common element, and if we just blindly pick a subarray that includes the twos, we'll actually end up with a lower value here because we're going to be converting all of these tens. After we apply our constant x, these tens will no longer be tens, right? They're going to be 18s, they'll be no longer k's, and uh, we won't be able to reach our output four. Whereas if we leave these tens alone and instead pick these fives here, we'll actually end up with a higher output, right? We will get a six, or five, sorry, bad math. These two would go to 10, and then we would have these already existing uh, tens here, right? So we can't simply pick the most common element. Um, we need to make sure we're finding the max frequency, but we also have to be cognizant of when we're converting these 10 or these K values that we started with. The first thing we want to notice here is we want to look at our uh, constraints. Now, if you notice, these are tightly bound. This input is very tightly bound. The elements in num are between 1 and 50. So with that in mind, we can easily target each possible num and see what the maximum frequency is for that given subarray. Right, so, and how can we make sure that we're finding the max frequency for a given target value? So let's say I arbitrarily pick, in this one, let's just say I arbitrarily pick five, right? How can I make sure that I'm finding that max frequency uh, in the subarray operations? And then again, making sure like the example I had just showed, making sure we're not catching too many Ks in there. Um, now, the algorithm you wanna keep in mind here is Cadane's algorithm. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, 
I would suggest looking at Leak Code 53 Maximum Subarray. That is a really good example of applying that algorithm. Um, and frankly, it's an algorithm that you should be pretty familiar with. It comes up in quite a few problems. So the short version of Cadane's algorithm is for when we are iterating through and constructing our subarrays, um, we have two choices, right? So for this example, if uh, we'll just start with this, and we don't need, for the sake of this, we don't need the rest of these. Um, when we are calculating here, we have two choices at a given element. We can either extend the current subarray by adding the element, or we can start a new subarray here. So if our calculation results in adding this current element, the subarray, the value is now lower than, than zero, we should always start from new, right? We should always skip it. Um, if it is above zero, then we should always continue. And again, if you're not super familiar with it, check out Leak Code 53. There are much better explanations out there. Um, but that's just kind of just a brief little overview on that one. So as we are checking each of these numbers here, we need to keep track of the maximum frequency for that given target number, right? So each number we will be able to uh, find the maximum frequency after applying the operation on it. And across all of those, we're gonna have to keep track of them and check from all the target values we've tested, which is the highest. So when it comes time to actually calculate and look at the target values, um, something we need to keep in mind is we need a baseline here. And the way that we're gonna get that is we're going to count the number of times that the original K shows up in our array, right? So before we start doing any of the processing or any of the calculation of the subarrays, we wanna count and see what our baseline so that we know what we're starting with. And also so that we can keep in mind, um, when we calculate a given subarray's maximum frequency after applying the operations, we are also excluding the number of free, uh, the number of k's that we started with and that'll make a little more sense when we get into the coding side so with that let's go ahead and get on that duplicates for that um, next so again we want to simulate for each possible value so we'll do four target value in range and we're going to go through every possible value in num so every possible uh, element in nums we want to check and see what the max frequency is for that subarray now there is one case we need to think of, and that is if uh, the target value is k. If it's already k, uh, obviously we don't need to calculate that. We've already done that with this starting frequency here, so we can just go ahead and skip that. Um, now, getting into the Cadane's algorithm part of it, as I had talked about, uh, what, when we are at any given element, we kind of have those two choices, so we can either extend the current subarray frequency by adding the element or we can start over from that current index and again when we're calculating that subarray we need another max variable to check and see from all the different subarrays in it which one is the highest again for that target value so we want to create two so current frequency equal to zero um, again we're going to use this as the place of keeping track of our current subarrays frequency and next current max and we'll be using that to compare all of our current frequency and see which uh, subarray had the highest possible frequency okay so with that we're going to iterate through every value in the array and there's two values we care about here so we care about if the element is k or if it's our target value if it is our target value that means that we can increment our current frequency and that means, again, when we apply x to it, this is going to turn into a k. So we want to increment that again. That'll tell us that possible max frequency. Now, next is if uh, nums is equal to k. Now, when we see this, any k that's applied to by an x is no longer going to be k. So we want to reduce that current frequency uh, because, again, it'll no longer be a k. Okay, now that we're here, we want, we're at that decision point, right? So current frequency will either continue. So if current frequency is greater than zero, we just want to continue. Now, if zero is larger than it, uh, we want to restart and we'll be restarting from that current index. Now, next, we want to make sure that we're comparing all of the possible outputs from the subarray. So we'll do um, current max is either current max 
or it's the current frequency of the given subarray that we're working on. And that's really it. So after that, all we need to do is for each simulated target value, we need to um, check our overriding max duplicates here and see, is this current target value have a higher output? So we'll just compare it with itself and then the current max. And at the point that we get here, we should have already calculated that target value and find the highest possible value from it. And that's what that current max represents. Now, next, um, now you may think we can just return max duplicates, but if you remember, max duplicates is telling us how many new Ks we can generate minus the Ks that were inside of that subarray. Now, for the example here, if max duplicates from this subarray is equal to one. Again, we're excluding the original K that's outside of that subarray. So we don't wanna return just max duplicates. We want to return max duplicates plus starting frequency. Now, if we take a look, we'll uh, run, it's accepted. And if we do submit, It looks good. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, give it a like if you enjoyed it. Um, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.